Welcome back. We're still talking about sensation and perception, but we have five of our senses down and five of our senses to go, and the last remaining five are a lot quicker. So we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Now we're going to be talking about our sense of touch. And our sense of touch might surprise you, but it's at least three different sensory systems. We have our somatic sensation system, which is really the sense of touch and feeling something coming in contact with your skin. Um, it could be also the sense of contact, let's say. But then we have nociception, and nociception is really the sensation of pain. This could happen internally if you're bruised, of course, uh, but it could also happen on the surface if you have a scrape or a cut. And then we have thermoception, which is the sen sensation of temperature. So these are really brief, but we'll go into these in slightly more detail next. So in somatoception, we actually have at least four different types of specialized cells. Now these look very different from rods and cones and very different from auditory hair cells. Uh, we have the Merkel's disc, Messenger's corpuscle, Ruffinson's ed organ, and Pacinian corpuscle. So let's go into these. So right at the surface of the skin, we have the Merkel's disc. And the Merkel's disc is really sensitive to light or moderate touch. This would be things, uh, if, the, if the butterfly flaps its wings next to you, or a tender kiss, or a feather strikes against your chin, these are really the light, feathery touches uh, that this can be really attuned to. So these are very sensitive nerve cells. Also near the surface of the skin is Messenger's corpuscle. And so this really applies to pressure. If there's a light handshake, these are going to fire. It's also the idea if you're going to tap yourself on the chin, not, not just a light feather attached to the chin, but a tap yourself on the chin sort of thing. So these are tuned to low frequency vibrations. Then we have Ruffini's end organ, and these are more like stretch neurons. This is the idea that if your skin is stretched, uh, you can feel the sensation of stretching along your skin, or if you're stretching your muscles. Um, they're also firing when there's heavy pressure. So if somebody's massaging you or giving you a heavy pressure, they'll feel that. If somebody's massaging your foot, you'll definitely feel Ruffini's end organs with the stretch along the bottom of your foot. And then finally, what we're going to talk about is the Bassinian corpuscle. Uh, this is uh, really deep and it's really sensitive to not just heavy pressure, but deep vibrations and high frequency vibrations. So these would fire with massages. They would also fire with a good squeeze, like a really tight hug. They'd also fire uh, back in the day when people had pagers or beepers, or if you had a cell phone in your pocket that's vibrating. Uh, so these would fire your Bassinian corpuscles. So together, these four types of neurons help to give us a sensation that something's coming in contact with our skin. But our sense of touch is so much more than just contact with our skin. There's also things like pain receptors. So in the nociception sensory system, we're not so much worried about what's in contact with us, like the sensation of our clothes on our skin, for instance, but more so the more salient and informative and alarming senses, such as pain. And so pain can come in many different varieties. One type of variety is mechanical pain. This is when there is tissue damage due to cutting or crashing or bruising. Uh, and so this is the idea that if we stub a toe, if we bonk our head, uh, if somebody's giving us a, a vaccine and it's, you know, it's alarming the tissue on our arm, uh, this is the idea that we will be alerted to this pain. But pain could also be chemical. A common type of chemical pain you may experience is actually pain on your tongue or in your intestines, and that comes from spicy food. And within spicy food, there is capsaicin, and capsaicin is not a taste bud reflex, it's actually a nociception reflex, it's actually a pain reflex. And this is the idea that if you eat lots of spicy food and you enjoy it, you have a strong uh, pain threshold to spice. Versus someone who doesn't have a strong pain threshold to spice, uh, they would not be able to eat that, it, it, would, it would cause pain. And then finally, we have thermal pain. And thermal pain is the idea, um, not just of temperature, but when you hit extreme temperatures on the tissues of your body, such as frostbite or sunburn, uh, you're going to be sensitive uh, to that type of thermal pain. Even if it's not a sunburn or frostbite, but you go outside and you feel the different weather on your face, you're going to be sensitive to that if it is uh, going to cause tissue damage. Now, just like many of our sensory systems, there can be illusions in our nociception system, uh, and this can cause phantom pain. 
often known with phantom lymph syndrome. In amputees or people who have had surgeries to remove parts of their body, those parts of the body may feel as though they are hurting, even though they are now removed. And what's often happening is the sensory nerves that were associated with that part, let's just assume if an arm was amputated, that the nerves associated with that arm are still firing. Uh, and so we feel pain, although there is no pain. Uh, this can be a very daunting syn syndrome um, and can be something really hard to reconcile after an amputation. And finally, within our sense of touch is the thermoception. This is pretty brief. We are aware of temperature changes in our environment. This usually is not even all that conscious. It's usually more subconscious until we go to make a change. So it's the idea if you're sitting at home and all of a sudden you just unconsciously go to grab a sweater without thinking about it, or you take your sweater off without thinking about it. Uh, it's the idea that when you feel warm or feel cold, we'll make differences uh, to adjust to the, to the climate. So when we're cold, we may put on mittens or drink hot drinks or, or what have you. And when we're warm, we may uh, fan ourselves or drink cold drinks. So these fluctuations have to do with our ability to sense our thermoceptive sense.